Hi, welcome back to Math 112. I'm going to walk you through the definition and understanding of a hyperbola. So what I have pictured here is a standard hyperbola. And this happens to be a vertical hyperbola. And it's vertical because it opens up and down. Now in the introductory video, I mentioned that you can think of a hyperbola as an ellipse blown inside out. And that's in part because of the definition of, or the standard equation for a hyperbola, but also because of the definition. So recall that the definition of an ellipse is the set of all points for which the sum of the distances between two points are equal. Excuse me. The sum of the distances for from two fixed points are equal. In other words, if you take the distances from those two focus points and add them up, you get the same number for every point on an ellipse. The definition for a hyperbola is similar, except that it is the difference of the two points. So for this hyperbola, I've got shown here. So we've got two focus points. And if I were to, let me just put on here for reference, the ellipse that if I had, if I had this same ellipse, or if I had an ellipse with this, that had these same folk, all parameters the same, except that it was an ellipse. So y plus k squared over b squared, except that should still be minus. plus, I wonder why it's unhappy with that, x minus h over a squared. Ah, that's going to be wrong. Okay, give me a sec. Ah, that's right the first time. Maybe we aren't going to do this with this ellipse. All right, forget the ellipse bit. Okay, just worry about the hyperbola. So what I've got on here is I've got a point marked on my hyperbola and I've got the two focus points. And if I calculate the distance from this point on my hyperbola to each of the focus points and then take the difference in absolute value, so I really should have my label up there as absolute value, but you can see that no matter where I am on that ellipse or on that hyperbola, that difference is the same. And just to assure you that, there we go. So that actually is a live calculation. So it's not the same for every hyperbola, but for any given hyperbola, that number is gonna be the same. And I've got this on the top um, of my hyperbola. If I put it on the bottom, if my point were on the bottom of the hyperbola, it wouldn't matter. It would be the same thing. There we go, it'll work here, okay? All right, so that is the definition of the hyperbola. I've got the standard form for hyperbolas right over here in my um, algebra bar to the left of your screen here. So for a hyperbola that is centered at the point HK, in this case, the origin, but that it, it, you can center your hyperbola anywhere, but so let's talk about horizontal first because they're a little easier, just the way our brains work. So the standard form for the equation of an ellipse looks a lot, or the standard form for the equation of a hyperbola looks a lot like the standard form for the equation of an ellipse. The only difference is the minus sign that appears between the x term and the y term. 
And that comes from the fact that the hyperbola is defined based on the difference of those distances, and the ellipse is defined based on the sum of those distances. The other difference is it does not matter which one is bigger, A or B. Your orientation, vertical versus horizontal, is determined by which variable comes first or which variable is positive. So if y is subtracted from x, you have a horizontal hyperbola. If x is subtracted from y, you have a vertical hyperbola. And b can be bigger or even equal to a. That, that doesn't have any bearing whatsoever when it comes to hyperbolas. It's more a matter of which one is positive. Okay, now I need to talk about some terminology. So I've got here my horizontal hyperbola. So we give names to some of the points. The points and my focus points aren't on here. There's my focus. Um, and we'll talk about how that is calculated in a minute. Let's make this guy four. That's better, okay. Now let's make this guy three, this guy four. Okay. Um, so the points around which your hyperbola wraps are your focus points. And those focus points are, as you can see, C units away from your center. And we're gonna talk about C in a minute. I'm gonna give you a table that summarizes all of this and how all of it is related. Your vertices are on the line that passes through the focus points. The name of that line is called the transverse axis. The conjugate axis is the line that goes is, ver is perpendicular to that and does not pass through the focus points. It passes through two points that are called the covertices. In ellipses, those axes were called, or those points were called the, not the covertices, but the endpoints of the minor axis, right? Okay. So, one thing to notice is that with hyperbolas, the vertex is between the focus and the center. So your A is always going to be smaller than your C. And that's true no matter what your vert, what your hyperbola looks like, okay? And that's true for both vertical and horizontal. I'm gonna spread my guy back out a little bit. There we go, okay. So, as you can imagine, drawing these things might be a little challenging, and you do not have to plot a whole bunch of points in order to sketch a hyperbola. What we do is we sketch what's called a reference rectangle, okay? And this reference rectangle has got vertical lines that go through both vertices and horizontal lines that go through both covertices, and you make a rectangle. Now, it turns out that there are two important lines, additional lines, that help to define our hyperbola, and those are the asymptotes. And those asymptotes are lines that go through the center and through the corners of your reference rectangle. And more importantly, you know their equations based on the A and the B and the H and the K. So the way to think about this is that these are two lines that go through the center and one has got the slope b over a, and one has got slope negative b over a. So these, these asymptotes are not perpendicular, but their slopes are known from the equation of the hyperbola. And once you have that reference rectangle and those asymptotes sketched in, it's not too difficult to sketch your hyperbola. Okay, 
So now you know about the reference rectangle, the equations of the asymptote lines, the focus points, the vertices, and the covertices, all for horizontal hyperbolas. All of these same things are present in vertical hyperbolas. And I'm going to shrink this down a little bit. There we go. So as you can see, my hyperbola is wrapping around my focus points. And my vertices lie on the line that go through the focus points and my covertices do not, but they are on the line that is perpendicular to that line. If we sketch our reference rectangle and our asymptotes, we can see how we would sketch our hyperbola. Okay, so all of this may feel like a whole lot of information and it is, but there is a nice nifty little table in your textbook that summarizes all of this up. And it looks like not that. All right, let's go get it. So it's right here in your textbook. It's on page 601. And as you can see, it summarizes everything for you. Now this is the version, this is the simpler version that is centered at the origin. This might be easier for you to see that the focus points are C units away from the origin. And your vertices are either are always A units away from your center. And your covertices are B units away from your center. Now, one thing your textbook does differently than the graph I just showed you is that A is always under, always comes first and B always comes second in the standard forms here. And that simplifies matters quite a bit. What it does complicate is the equations for the asymptotes. So pick, so if you're going to use your table, you should use, follow the textbook um, notation. For a horizontal hyperbola, your asymptotes have got slope b over a and negative b over a. For a vertical hyperbola, your, asympt your asymptotes have got slope a over b and negative a over b because of the fact that in the textbook, a always comes first. The, the graph I was using followed the convention I learned, which was that A always goes with X and B always goes with Y. But stick with the textbook convention for this course. It'll be simpler for you because this will be the table that you'll likely be referencing. So this is your standard. This is all the information you need for hyperbolas. It's in your textbook. You can go get it and reference it throughout your work on this course. And it's a good thing to know where to find for when you encounter hyperbolas again. All right, so let's get to doing some work. I'll be back in a minute.